Hello friends and welcome back to our Fast API tutorial. In this video, which is number 31 in the series, uh, not many left, I think I got one, two, three, four more after this, uh, we will be discussing background tasks. So you can see here we've got our app up and running. Um, we've still got all the old stuff from the uh, from the last videos uh, still in here because, you know, why not? Um, and here in main, I've added this background tasks um, section. You'll notice here is a log.txt. Uh, don't worry about that yet. Um, that's gonna come into play in, in this video. So, okay, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to import background tasks with an S from Fast API. Background, yeah, it's not already imported yet. So from Fast API, background tasks. Now, Starlet has a background task uh, package that we can import, but we're gonna we're not gonna do that. And there are uh, reasons why you should use the ones the one from Fast API instead of the one from Starlet. Um, and it is in the documentation. If you want to go ahead and take a look, I can uh, post a link to that um, in the uh, in the description. And I'm gonna have to set a reminder to myself to do that because I'm not gonna be uploading this immediately upon recording it, and I'll forget. Um, hold on one second. Okay, I wrote the note, otherwise I'll forget. Now, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna create a, uh, a method that we're gonna actually call in the background. So def write notification, email is a string, message is an empty string, and then with open, and this is where log.txt comes into play, mode equals write as email file content equals f string notification for email is going to just be message and then email file nope dot write content there we go so and let's go back in the beginning here so all that's happening here, when if we were to just call this method ourselves, which we can do, um, it would just write that line, this line right here, inputting the email and message uh, where it shows up there. Okay, now we're gonna actually write our, we're gonna you know create our route. App.post, send notification email, and then async def send notification email is going to be a string background tasks we will use background tasks right there then all we're going to do background tasks dot add task write notification with email and message equals some notification I think some notification yes and then return message notification sent in the background. So let's look just a little bit in more detail at what add task is doing. So we have this callable function and then we have any arguments and keyword arguments. And then what will happen is it will just call background task with the function that we're setting and pass in the arguments and keyword arguments that we need. So that's why we're able to take, so this these are the argument, keyword argument. So we're going to be passing in argument, keyword argument, and they just get added as inputs to the function. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and actually what I want to do, import time, um, time.sleep, um, I'll say five. Because I just want to I want to make it fairly obvious what's going on here. So let's apply black to it. There we go. One file formatted. Let's minimize this. And I'm just going to hide this for now. Um, I'm going to open up log.txt. We'll refresh our page. And here we are going to do blah at example.com. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to tell you when I click on this and then we're gonna wait five seconds. Click, one, 
two, three, four, five. Come on. Oh, this is going to make me look bad. Okay, I had to refresh, but it's there. Okay, so it didn't immediately show up. Let's do blah, blah, execute, and I am going to refresh, and there is blah, blah. And I think the landscapers are here. They are, but I'm just going to keep on going. Okay, so that's how we do that. Very, very simple. So now um, what we're going to do uh, is we're going to add, uh, we're going to include um, dependency injection. Um, actually, one other point that I want to make, we can add more stuff into here. Um, we can actually, um, uh, where do I put it? Status code equals 202. So if we now refresh this page, we can see we would get a successful response from here um, as opposed to, uh, so here, let's, HTTP code 202, accepted. So if this is gonna run in the background, you don't necessarily wanna return a 200 if you're not sending anything. You know, you can just leave it as blank or, you know, or whatever, because this is, you know, adding something to a queue. Okay, so now let's look at dependency injection. So we are going to, instead of that, I'm gonna comment that out def write log message string with open log.txt mode equals a as log. I don't know what mode equals a is. If someone would be kind enough, I don't know that I want to do, you know, let's just pull it open really quickly. Python with open mode a. Good old Stack Overflow. Oh, I'm not signed in. Okay, confirm my choices. I don't like cookies. Open for writing, file is created if it does not exist. The stream is positioned at the end of the file. Oh, interesting. So W would just, will just overwrite anything that's in the file, whereas A will write it to the end. That's good to know. That's very good to know, actually. Okay, next. Um, def get query background tasks is a background tasks object q string or none equals none if q message equals f found query q and we'll put a new line background tasks dot add task write log message nope that was horrendous there we go and then we are going to return Q from our get query. And then app.post send notification email. And it's really up to you whether you want to use um, underscores or dashes here. Um, I, I think the convention is, is using hyphens, but I, I don't think you have to. Um, but, you know, still, whatever. But for a Python method, def, you need to use underscores send notification. Email is going to be a string. That's remarkably loud considering what the ambient background noise is. I apologize for that. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to try and power through here um, because I have something else I got to do in about 10 minutes. So wait, wait. Okay, let's rock and roll. So we have our email, which is a string, and we have background tasks, which are background tasks, and Q is a string which depends on get query. And then message is going to be F message to email with a new line, background tasks dot add task write log message and then we will return message message sent so let's take a look at what's going on here if my computer will update it's been running a little sluggish i think it's because i 
I recently had to install Docker Desktop. Um, okay, okay, okay. So we get the query there. I guess we don't really need the query. It's We need to include it as a dependency, even though we're not going to be using it. Um, but I think PyCharm is, yeah, it's going to tell me to remove the parameter, which I don't want to do. Because what's going to happen, and you know what, let's just do... Um, query is going to be Q, just so that we can say that we're actually using it. So now let's refresh our page. So now if we look at email, um, blah1 at example.com. So let's look at log.txt. So I'm going to get rid of this, and let's hit execute. And we see we get message to blah1 at example.com. Great. And you can see we get query is null message is message sent. Now, if we add in a query, hello world, now what should happen, execute, found query is hello world, message to blah one at example.com. So what's going on now, and if we were to add in the time.sleep um, again, and I'll just comment this out for now, just to demonstrate, but, you know, we, we were able to see um, that it you know, it, it's a delayed process. Um, so it's submitting this request, getting the response, and then it's doing this stuff in the background. So if Q is found by this depends get query, so if Q is not none, then it adds a log, it adds the, the task, if you will, of writing the log with this message saying that we found the query. If there is no query, then it just adds this message, message to email. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that's how that works. How you can include that dependency in there. And we also just in include it here because we're using this. Now, if we weren't going to be writing, um, if we weren't going to be calling write log in the background tasks in send notification, we wouldn't need to include this in here. But because we're doing it here and here, we need to have it in both places. Okay, so that's kind of it for this. Um, just a, a quick little note, um, if you're, if you're going to be doing something that's um, uh, like in a heavy background task, so let me just kind of backtrack for a second. Background tasks are not a replacement for something like Celery. Um, Celery is better for heavy computational background tasks or things where you don't need to share processes. Like, you know, if, if you want to pass variables if you want to write a variable to a log in a background that's from here, then you're going to want to use a background task. Like let's say you're sending a message and you generate the, like you're sending an email as a background task and you generate the email in here and you want to use the values that you've set in here, you might want to just use a background task. But if you're going to be doing something computationally heavy where you're not going to be using in-memory data, then it's probably better to use something like Celery. The background tasks are more for smaller things. Um, Okay, that's it for this video. I think uh, in the next one, we're gonna touch on um, uh, setting up metadata, which will, you know, you can see here, there's not really a lot of descriptive information for, um, for this API. And if we're writing this for public consumption, we might wanna include some more information. And uh, again, you notice that we've always been using docs here. Uh, we're gonna see how we can change this endpoint for our documentation URL. Uh, so that will come in the next video. I will see you then.